All right, everyone. This is the third and final video about troubleshooting DC electronics. This is the radar detector, which had a bunch of fried components right over here on the DC input side. And I removed a lot of those components. One of them was an electrolytic capacitor, which was uh, pulled. And when it was pulled, um, come to find out, it was not bad. But right here, right between this point and this point, right there, was this guy. That little capacitor right there, which just stuck to my screwdriver. Yep, there it goes. Now you can see it. This guy shorted. And this guy was actually in line with the other one. And it was, it was another capacitor which was going between ground and the positive leg. So what did I do to clean it up, fix it all? So in the end, what I end up doing is... Okay, right here is the negative leg. This component right here, which joined this pad and the ground plane, which is all this. This component here was fried and I changed it out and now it is solder mass, just a straight up solder mass. It was a, a filtering, um, it was either a resistor or it was a diode and my assumption was that it was a diode because it's on the ground plane allowing uh, electricity to enter into the device only in one direction. But there's also this rectifying diode, this big black guy right here under this white wire. and what told me where the positive side had to connect was where this white wire is connected right here. This is one of the legs to the electrolytic capacitor. So I checked the electrolytic on my multimeter and it did come out to 220 microfarads. So since it was close to 220 microfarads, I went ahead and put it back in. And here's one leg, the other leg is up under here. So that is connecting my positive plane to my negative plane and it should not have been a short so right here was where the short was this little capacitor right here and that was probably a coupling capacitor or something like that between this ground plane and the positive leg right here doesn't really matter it's it's changed out now so it is what it is so I connect this wire between this point and this point so now my positive has been jumpered my negative is jumpered and since I am not a manufacturer, I can do that <laughs> because I can remove all the safety and everything necessary. I, I don't really care. It's just going in a Jeep. Um, so anyway, here we go. I got that guy back in. I put the case back on. Uh, just put the display back in right here. And let's go ahead and get this guy hooked up. So I want you guys to notice that my regulated DC is set to 12 volts. And I already shorted the leads together and we are sitting at one amp. So I should be good to go. I think there was a three amp fuse in here initially. So I, I am now limited at one amp. This guy here should not pull an amp at 12 volts. That would be a lot of wattage. So anyway, uh, everything is back in. All the boards are mated back together. Um, as far as I can tell, it's ready to clamshell back up. So I wanted to make this video as I'm clamming it back up so here is the uh, display hood we'll go on just like this there we go yep and this guy I believe goes like this right here Wait. there we go all right while I'm holding it together, I'll sink these last four screws. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. One. Notice how I'm putting the screws in diagonal to each other. That helps hold the case together. Keeps all the boards and everything inside aligned. There we go. Now I'll put the other diagonal screws in. Okay, we are ready for a moment of truth now that my unit is completely jumpered. Okay, so here's my uh, DC 12 volt and it's ready to plug in. Test. 
Well, I do have a little bit of a display. Now, mind you, in my first video, I told you guys that this display right here was completely cooked. And um, it's okay, because really, a radar detector doesn't have to have a display anyway. That's complete garbage. Uh, you're not going to be looking at this regardless. Um, but this display, I probably could buy it if I really wanted to. But... Sounds like it's working, guys. All right. So let's see, dim. All right, well. Display. Display. It's clearly Dark. working. Dark. Display. Dark. Display. Dark. Bright. Okay, well, what? My display is all the way bright and I can barely make it out so my backlight is clearly shot, but it's working. And when I disconnect power and then reconnect power like in my vehicle when I shut it off and start it back up. System ready. All right, so it passes itself check and this guy is ready to go. How cool is that? So even though it fried the components, I was able to bypass them. I could have replaced them, but it, is, it wasn't really worth it. Um, if it was something like a rectifying diode that went bad, of course I'd have to replace it because sometimes they use things like that for uh, regulating the voltage. But um, hey, I think it's good to go. We're ready. Um, anyway. Just goes to show you that uh, you can fix things even though they seem seemingly impossible and they're broke. This guy is good to go. If anything, I would never bypass components like this if it was something for a customer or something for somebody else. But since this is my own and it's only going to be powered up when I'm in the vehicle, I have no problem with this. Not at all. Um, mind you, there's one other thing that I have to do. If you guys remember from video one, one of the very first things I did is I foil wrapped the fuse. So now what I have to do is I have to go and get another, uh, let's say one and a half amp. It had a three amp I believe in the beginning. You see it runs perfectly fine on one amp. I will probably replace it with a one amp in case I have any electrical problems going forward. But uh, just a reminder, if you guys ever foil wrap a fuse, remember to disconnect it. And also, don't foil wrap a fuse ever if you're going to plug this straight into a 12 volt power source like a battery, like in your car. Because that would be unlimited amount of amperage. You could melt this guy. You almost definitely will melt the cable and probably start a fire. DC is no joke. It is the worst type of electrical fire you can get. So. Take your caution. I do things here because this is a very contained environment. I would never do stuff like this for a customer or on a piece of medical equipment. But just to go just to show you, you can use a regular DC power supply to troubleshoot your device and things can be fixable even when you think that maybe they're beyond repair. Thanks for watching guys.